Good morning, everyone. I'm sorry we can't be together in person, but I'm hoping you'll join me in singing some hymns to celebrate Palm Sunday together. First, we'll be singing Hosanna, Loud Hosanna. Hosanna, loud Hosanna, the little children sing. Through pillared court and temple, the lovely anthem rang. To Jesus who had blessed them, most folded to his breast, the children sang their praises, the simplest and the best. From Olivet they followed, mid an exultant crowd. The victory palm branch waving and chanting clear and loud. The Lord of earth and heaven rode on in lowly state, nor scorned that little children should on his bidding wait. Hosanna in the highest, that ancient song we sing, for Christ is our Redeemer, the Lord of heaven, our King. Oh, may we ever praise Him with heart and life and voice, and in His blissful presence eternally rejoice. Please join me in singing, Were You There?
Welcome to my first sermon preached from home. I'll be utilizing my cell phone for the first time. My name is Kim Fields, and I'm one of the pastors at Central Church in Richland, Washington. Wherever you are, and however you are watching, I want to thank you for joining us today. I pray that you will hear something that blesses your week. Today is Palm Sunday, the the day when we celebrate the beginning of the Holy Week by recalling Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. He came in at the head of a parade of excited folks who carpeted his paths with palm branches as they shouted out loud and waved loud hosannas. But first, let us begin with prayer. Oh God, this has been a long week, a long week for many of us. We are a social people. It is not easy for us to self-isolate. Help us, Lord, to be patient. Keep us aware that we are never alone, for you are always with us. As the virus spreads, we're more and more aware of its presence in our midst. Calm our fears. We pray for those who are sick, those who are alone. We pray for those who mourn, separated from family and support. We pray for medical workers, for first responders, for grocery clerks, for delivery drivers, and for others on the front lines. We give thanks for them and pray protection upon them. We pray for those who are struggling financially. We pray with those of issues of depression and of anxiety. We pray for our leaders. And God, we pray for ourselves. Some days we don't even know what to pray. And so we pray together that prayer that your son taught us to pray, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As I said, today is Palm Sunday. But Palm Sunday without palms and processions, well, it doesn't feel much like Palm Sunday. Yet though we may not be able to sing loud hosannas together or wave palm branches, we can still pause and we can still reflect on the day. Let me begin by reading to you Mark's account of what happened on Palm Sunday. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why you are doing this, say the Lord needs it, and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, What are you doing trying to untie the colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut out in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessing is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything. But since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. We read that Jesus last week began at the head of a parade. As he walked up the well-worn path into Jerusalem, 
to celebrate the Passover. Jesus and his disciples made the journey from Bethany, where he was staying with friends. As they made their way up and over the Mount of Olives, they saw the city laid out there below them. And Jesus, knowing what was coming, wept for the fate of his children. Nonetheless, he had work to do. And so they made their way across the Kidron Valley, where he was met by the citizens of Jerusalem, who came out to welcome him as their long-promised king. Slowly, Jesus made his way up the path to the Golden Gate, as countless other Passover pilgrims had done before him. Except this time the path was lined with crowds who bowed down before him, casting their cloaks and palm branches on the path to pave his way. As they cried out praises to their king, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus walked that path in obedience to his father. He walked that path with his excited disciples who were sure that it was going to lead to victory. But they were soon to learn that no one knows where God's paths, even his ancient well-worn paths will lead. I'm reminded of a story that I read a number of years ago. It's a story about another well-worn path. This story takes place in Old Pilgrim Church. This church was erected a long time ago, near the center of one of our larger Midwestern cities. Today it stands like a huge stone fortress, guarding what has become a largely abandoned downtown. It stands as a monument to the city's glorious past. It's still a large church with many members, but not many of its members live by nearby anymore. Most of those who worship on Sunday drive at least 30 minutes to attend the services. Midweek programming has been mostly abandoned. There are very few meetings held during the week. After all, the neighborhood is no longer safe after dark. Much of the church's ministry is now focused on the building. The members take great pride in their facility, and somehow they've always been able to find the money they need to keep it in pristine condition. Indeed, just over three years ago, they held a special fundraiser to raise money to re-carpet the entire church. The new carpet was beautiful, but about six months ago, someone noticed a path in the carpet that ran around the perimeter of the sanctuary. It appeared in small patches at first. They might have thought it was normal wear were it not for the fact that the patches were in both low and high traffic areas. In fact, if you look closely, you could see one curved wear pattern that extended all the way from the front pew, past the baptismal font, almost to the central aisle. A similar mark could be seen curving past the piano bench on the other side of the sanctuary. There were also wear marks circling the ends of the pews. But at least those made some sense, since half the congregation walked past one or the other every Sunday. It was only later, when the wear marks grew together to form a distinct path circling the whole sanctuary, that they began to confront the mystery of who or what was making the path. The chair of the church council, of course, called a special meeting to discuss the path. But no one knew it caused it. Some of the older members were pretty sure that it was the kids tearing around the sanctuary after the youth fellowship meeting. But they called up the youth pastor, and he persuaded them that that could not be the case. There were a few jokes about the church ghost wearing a path. But no one could come up with a logical explanation for what had happened. The meeting was adjourned after a motion to replace the carpet was tabled until they could determine just what was causing the path. Months passed, and with each passing month, the path in the sanctuary grew deeper and deeper. By now, almost everyone in the entire congregation was speculating about the mystery. What had caused the well-worn path? It was the subject of much conversation during the coffee hour. The pastor even brought it up in the sermons from time to time. (laughs) Why, even the local paper ran an article on it in the religion section one Friday. Visitors started dropping by to have a look and speculate about what might have caused it. Some even returned. Some started attending the church. 
or there were still those who wanted to replace the carpet, but most had come to look upon the path as an asset, so the replacement plan was postponed indefinitely. Then one January night, when the temperature dropped to 30 degrees below zero, the custodian drove in to check on the boiler. Just as he was about to leave, he noticed some movement in the sanctuary. His first thought was, of course, to call the police. I mean, no one had any business in the church at this late an hour. But as he peered in through the narthex window, he thought he recognized the person moving through the shadows. Sure enough, it was old Roy Lincoln, the retired shoemaker whose shop used to sit across the street with the apartment upstairs where he lived. He hadn't seen Roy in years. Someone said that Roy had moved it to the old hotel on the far side of the courthouse when developers tore down his shop and the apartment above it. Curious, he watched as Roy slowly walked around the sanctuary, following the well-worn path in the carpet. He appeared to be talking to himself as he walked. Is that you, Roy? The custodian called out in a loud voice. What are you doing up so late on such a cold, cold night? Oh, hi, Sid, Roy replied. I didn't hear you come in. I'm just walking and praying. I can't kneel anymore and I need the exercise, so I just pray while I walk. Sometimes I talk to God. Other times I listen while God talks to me. I pray for the lonely and the sick, for families that I know are struggling, and for my friends out on the street. You don't mind that I'm here, do you? I mean, Sid, this has always been my church. No, Sid said, I don't mind. Just be sure the door is locked behind you when you leave. The next morning, when Sid saw the pastor, he told him that the mystery of the well-worn carpet had been solved. Then he explained about Roy and his walking and his praying. Word spread through the congregation quite quick, quickly that, that Roy Lincoln was the cause of the path in the sanctuary carpet. After that, there was no more talk of replacing the carpet. When visitors came, the members would point to the path with pride and tell them of Roy and his walking and his praying. From time to time, one of them would stop by the church late at night and walk and pray with Roy as he went around and around the sanctuary. It was on one of those occasions when a member offered Roy a ride home. Well, I am home, Roy replied. This is where I sleep. I thought everybody knew. Since I lost my place a few years back, I've been sleeping in the balcony storage room. I don't really have anywhere else to go. The next day, the church council had a special meeting. They had a problem to consider, and it was not a comfortable mystery. One of the new members spoke up first. He suggested that that they could turn some of the spare rooms into a shelter for homeless folks like Roy, adding then Roy and the other street people in our neighborhood would have a warm place to sleep. His suggestion was followed by a long, uncomfortable silence. Everyone knew it was probably the right thing to do, but no one wanted the responsibility for making it happen or, or for caring for such a ministry nor were they sure that they wanted those folks in their church. They sat in silence for a while. Finally, the pastor rose to his feet. He said, maybe we should try praying about it. I suggest we go in the sanctuary and pray for a while. And one by one, the council members followed behind as he led them into the sanctuary and along the well Worn path. It can be a dangerous thing to walk a well-worn path following God's call. The thing is, you really never know where it might lead. On Palm Sunday, Jesus walked another well-worn path into Jerusalem. It started out as a path of welcome, a path of hope and of celebration. But that was not where the path led. For less than a week later, Jesus followed another well-worn path out of the city. It too was lined with crowds, many of them the same people who welcomed him as king on Palm Sunday. But this time, 
Instead of cheering, they cursed him. They cast stones and they threw garbage at him. Instead of riding a colt, Jesus drug a cross through the dust. This path led up the hill to Golgotha, the place of the skull. And there Jesus was nailed to a cross between two thieves. And there Jesus died. It's true. One needs to be prepared when following Jesus up the paths of life. For we never know where those paths will lead. They don't always lead to where we hope for or where we expect it. Jesus' paths can be hard. Sometimes they're dangerous. But we walk with the promise of God that all paths ultimately lead to the good, at least for those of us who love him and are called according to his purposes. After all, if you think about it, even the path to Golgotha, which led to a death on a cross, ultimately ended with a story of resurrection. But we're getting ahead of ourselves here. That good news awaits Easter Sunday. That is next week's story. For now, we stand at the beginning of Holy Week, and our path ahead leads first to Jerusalem and first to the welcome of Palm Sunday. For now, we have to wait for Easter, even as we wait to go back to normality in this country. We wait. But we wait confident that God walks with us, which means there is no better way to wait than to wait in prayer. So let me ask you, will you walk with me? Will you walk with Jesus down the well-worn path of prayer? I hope you join us for the next step in our journey this coming Friday, as we celebrate Good Friday with the Tenebrae service of light and dark. You'll, you'll be able to find it at our website, cupchurch.org. But for now, for now we have to wait. So will you join me? Will you join me as we walk and as we pray?